Scientists are investigating a surprising new pollutant in the country's waterways. More than five trillion pieces of plastic are estimated to be floating in the world's seas. Just a fraction washes ashore. New report says plastic will outweigh fish in the oceans by 2050. When people think of plastic pollution, they might think of bottles that wash up on the beach. Um, but the, the plastic pollution that I'm looking at is the really tiny pieces, which are called uh, microplastics. So those are five millimeters or less in size. You have to look a little more carefully because they are so small, but if you start paying attention and, and looking at the surface of the ocean, you might find some small pieces, if you, especially if you dipped a net in the water and looked at what you caught. Like if you saw some seaweed floating along and you scooped it up with a net, you'll catch the organism and then you'll see, oh, what are those little dots next to it? And these are microplastics. I think we should be worried. Um, I think we should be uncomfortable at the fact that there are large quantities of effectively a, a man-made product that are in, you know, pristine waters out in the middle of nowhere. We all think the plastics float, but as they weather and break down, they actually can become neutrally buoyant to negatively buoyant. So there's actually a rain of microplastics planet-wide that's slowly coming out of the surface layer and heading for the deep sea with unknown consequences for marine life in the deep ocean. The way that almost all researchers right now study microplastics is by going to sea in a boat and dragging a net through the water. It's very expensive to go out to sea on research vessels or to, to hire people um, to go out and collect data. It's usually a plankton net that's intended to catch small microscopic marine life, but ends up catching large numbers of microplastics depending on where you are. And then somebody has to look through a microscope and sort the sample, and that's it's actually very tedious and time consuming. Yeah, there's lots of, lots of gooey stuff in there. But I can definitely see some, some blue and green and white uh, pieces that are most likely little pieces of plastic. To some extent, I think we sort of owe it to ourselves and owe it to our environment to be able to at least understand what it's doing out there. And we really don't understand. So we need to be able to, to do the science that will help inform future decision making. Winner, design of an ocean plastic sampling instrument, Ethan Edison. initial prototype of the, the manta ray microplastic sampler. One of the things about ocean sensors is the smaller and more energy efficient the better. If it detects a particle coming through, it diverts the particle out into a series of one of 30 filters that are, are in here. I think it's important to be a little bit of an idealist, like I'm sure people told him, probably me included, uh, that's too hard, you really can't do that, you know. He doesn't give up. So he's just kept working on this, and I'm really happy that it's sort of coming to fruition. And now that you know this thing might become a reality, which would be really good. It would be great if everyone had that awareness because you know it would probably bring a lot more change to the issue. Trying to you know shut off the faucet, you know stop plastic at the source, um, reduce our consumer need for it is a good start, but uh, there needs to be more than that.